going to be like the center of attention if you wear this one. It's one of the most popular uh, fragrance that they have. Oh, wow. I haven't even put it in my nose, you guys. And I can already, you know, this is a very intense fragrance like i haven't even put it in my nose i was just fanning it and this is definitely a beast very animalic hey everybody welcome back to my channel my name is jimberly Lee. those of you that are new to this channel welcome and if you are currently a subscriber thank you so much for tuning in Today, I am going to be reviewing the Frederick Mall Discovery Set because I know a lot of you guys out there really wanted to try like the niche fragrances but they didn't really want to commit into getting like the full size or either blind buy. And I wouldn't recommend for you guys to blind buy these fragrances because these are on a higher price range. So that's why I'm here to show you guys the Discovery Sets. But before we get started, let's go ahead and find out who is Frederick Mall. And as always, if you guys like this type of video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you guys are not subscribed, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so you can be updated with my upcoming video. Let's go ahead and get into it. So for those of you that don't know, Frederick Mall is a publisher and a renowned author of the perfume. Editions de Parfums Frederick Mall is a publishing house for the industry's very best perfume designer. Its goal is to push the limits of perfume creation and elevate perfumery to a whole new artistic level. Frederick Mall was born into a French family of industrialists, artists, and perfumers. His grandfather Serge Heffler Louis was the founder of Farfumes Christian Dior and an emblem of France's perfume legacy. At a time when most cosmetic companies were focusing exclusively on brand image and celebrity figureheads to generate an illusion of quality, Frederick Mall decided to draw attention back to the product itself when he founded Editions de Parfums Frederick Mall in 2000. He heralded a return to luxury perfumery. The idea for the brand was born from a desire to give total creative freedom back to the perfumers. Under Frederick's guidance as a perfume publisher who pushes them to their creative limits and lead them into new olfactory territory. Perfumers produces unique work of art sold under their old names. Together, the perfumers and publisher realizes a vision of perfume as the masterful result of time precision, and true talent. Before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that I actually did some experiment on these fragrances. Two days ago, I spray all six of them in a tissue paper because I really want to know uh, what is the longevity of it because I know some people, they prefer something that is long-lasting. It's been about two days. I'm going to find out or we're going to find out if these are actually long-lasting and if it's really worth to buy. So I'm going to go ahead and show that to you guys after I go through all the fragrances so we can go ahead and you know find out. <laughs> the first one that we're going to try is the En Passant. So this is supposed to be a lilac. So the top notes on this are lilac and cucumber. And then the base note is white musk and cedar. This is definitely a spring scent. And the notes behind this fragrance is Olivia Giacobetti. It's very, it smells very clean and fresh. It's floral. Uh, and this is definitely a gender neutral fragrance. Also keep in mind that Frederick Mall's fragrances are, most of them are gender neutral. Even like the one that are white florals, rose to bros, it can be both uh, worn by men and women. So to me, this is a clean scent. It smells good, but it's not my preference. Yeah, it, it is definitely like a skin scent uh, fragrance. Yeah, this would be perfect for like the spring, maybe in summer, because it smells very light and crispy. 
So yeah, that is the end pasang. Next thing we're gonna try is Iris Poudre. Ooh, wow, this scent is very familiar. It's very familiar in like personally, it's not something it's not something that I smell like in any type of designer fragrances or any other perfume, but it's something that I smell like like in life or in like experiences. This is a very interesting smell. Oh wow. Oh wow. That smells really good. This is like a combination of like a soft and deep scent. Oh wow. This smells really good, you guys. Like It's very unique. And the nose behind these is Pierre Bourdon. So the top notes on this are ylang ylang, carnation, palisander, rosewood, bergamot, and orange. The middle notes are aldehyde, violet, lily, rose, jasmine, and magnolia. And then the base note is iris, iris, musk, sandalwood, vetiver, vanilla, amber, and ebony tree. This smells really good. I definitely would give this like a 9 out of 10. The next one we're going to try is Eau de Magnolia. Oof. This have a very strong uh, introduction. And on the Oude Magnolia guys is Carlos Benign. Hmm. It's very citrusy. Like it has a citrus smell to it. So the main accords are citrus, floral, woody, earthy, aromatic, fresh, spicy, and mossy. I would say that this is very feminine. It's a really fresh, great for tropical place. Um, if you live in a hot country uh, or a tropical country, um, this is definitely a good uh, fragrance for you. This is also good for um, spring, summer, because of the citrus. It kind of gives it a, that summer vibes. Okay, so the notes on this are Calabrian Bergamot, middle notes are Magnolia, Vetiver, and Patchouli, and then the base notes is Moss, Cedar, and Amber. Oh, it smells so good. I wasn't expecting. This is good. Like, I, I didn't expect that I would like this one. So all these three fragrances that I've tried so far, I... I feel like I have never really smelled them before somewhere else or from a different uh, brand. The next one we're gonna try is the Musk Ravager. Uh, and I've heard that this is one of the most popular uh, fragrance that they have. A lot of people use this actually. Let me see. Oh wow. It has a lot of spice to it. Like it has a it it's like a combination of like different types of spices. It's dark and deep scent. It almost kind of has like that syrupy smell. Notes on this are lavender, tangerine, bergamot. And the middle notes are cinnamon. See, that's what that's where the spices is coming from. Cinnamon and cloves. And then the base notes are vanilla, musk, tonka bean, amber, sandalwood, gayak wood, and cedar. The notes behind these fragrance is Maurice Rosel. So to me, it smells very woody, powdery. Um Spicy, warm, oh, smells good, musky, cinnamon, you can definitely smell the cinnamon in here. It's hard to describe it, but this is a holiday scent. Um, it's perfect for fall or 
um, winter weather. This is a great uh, occasion fragrance as well. If you have a very special occasion to attend, definitely would say that this uh, fragrance can really make a statement because if you wear this and you go into a gathering, they will for sure notice you. Um, yeah, absolutely. It, it, you're going to be like the center of attention if you wear this one. Yeah, this, I would definitely give this, I have to be accustomed to this type of scent. Uh, I haven't reached that level yet, but I would give this like 8 out of 10. The next one we're going to try is the Portrait of a Lady, one of the most popular uh, scent that they have. Oh, wow. I haven't even put it in my nose, you guys, and I can already, you know, this is a very intense fragrance like i haven't even put it in my nose i was just fanning it and i feel like the the scent is already uh this you know dispersing all over this room oh wow um it smells it smells very intense it is very intoxicating um in a good way okay um you would not i should have only sprayed one time because two is I guess it's one is enough spray for this. Uh, I would not recommend bathing on these because it, it might trigger, uh, you know, a headache or something. It smells very good. It smells very unique. It's um, it's true to rose. So Portrait of a Lady was launched in 2010. The nose behind this fragrance is Dominic Ropion, and the top notes on this are rose. Clove, raspberry, black currant, and cinnamon. And then the middle note is patchouli, incense, sandalwood. And then the base note is musk, benzoin, and amber. Okay, so <laughs> this is good, but it's very strong. Um, it's not one of those fragrances like, you know, back in the day where they're very strong and it automatically just triggers headache. This one, it has a fruity to it and a musky and a floral. It smells really good. Um, it smells very sensual, seductive. Um, definitely a date night fragrance. Uh, I'm sorry guys, I love this, I, I love the scent, but it's just, it's, this is definitely a beast. If you want to make a statement again, uh, same thing as the Musk Ravager. Um, this is another alternative option if you really want to, um, wear something that is, that, that everybody's gonna talk about you. A 10 out of 10 fragrance. The next one we're gonna review is the Carnal Flower. Oh, this smells so good. I could honestly just bathe on the smell if I could. There's something about it that smells refreshing, it has a lot of floral. So, this perfume, guys, is very animalic. So the Carnal Flower was launched in 2005 and the nose behind this is also Dominic Ropion. So the notes on this is tuberose, eucalyptus, jasmine, coconut, orange blossom, ylang ylang, melon, white musk, and bergamot. So it's crazy how they mix you know, the tuberose, the, the coconut. Like, there's a creamy in there that I'm thinking it might be the coconut. But I feel like all of my favorite notes on a fragrance is here. Tuberose, jasmine, um, bergamot. I feel like all in this, you know, fragrance together. It just blends so smoothly. For some reason, like the smell, it just blends harmoniously and it creates this... Um, you know, again, like a sensual, seductive. This would be the perfect perfume for your wedding day. 
I smell that here. It's because it, I feel like when you smell this and you're walking down that aisle and you're surrounded with flowers and then you smell like carnal flower, I feel like that would definitely leave a very memorable moment. So I have tried all of them. You guys ask me what is my all-time favorite. I would definitely say the carnal flower. Everything smells great. They're very unique. And they're definitely a masterpiece perfume, but if I would only have to choose one out of the six of the best-selling, you know, scent, that would be the carnal flower. Um, I, I think I, I would have to get the full size of it. <laughs> So before we end this video, I just want to let you guys know that I have sprayed these fragrances two days ago and I want to go ahead and smell and get through each of them to see which is the one that smells still there. So this is the Musk Ravager. Two days later, the smell still here. So the next one is the Anpassant. Still here. Next is Eau de Magnolia. There's a slight scent here. It's still here, but it's very, very faded. It's the portrait of a lady. This is the one that's like beast, guys. This is still here, and it's still very strong. The, you know, one spray of this is still here lingering. You guys want something that's long-lasting, portrait of a lady. Iris Poudre. I don't smell anything. All the smell here is gone. The last one is the carnal flower. Wow. Two days later and the smell is still here. Amazed with these fragrance, this perfume house. If you guys wanted to try these fragrances, I highly recommend for you guys to start with the discovery set first and explore, experiment, and discover what is it that you like the most and maybe, you know, go from there and then buy the you know maybe the full size or even the travel size because these fragrances are a beast uh, especially the portrait of a lady and the carnal flower the musk ravager those definitely are some of the most intense fragrance i have ever used in my entire life and they do smell good uh, despite their them being very intense and very intoxicating um, would I recommend this house? Absolutely. I 1000% recommend them. And uh, for those of you that are wondering, this is not a sponsored video. Frederick Mall actually do not do any type of marketing with their fragrances. Um, their fragrances are basically known for word of mouth. So yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please give it a thumbs up if you guys like this video. And also don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys on my next video. Bye!